Allison is going to talk a little bit about our chapter in organic chemistry called Families of Carbon Compounds. So we're going to look at functional groups, the intermolecular forces between functional groups and intermolecular attractions in general, and then a tool used to identify specific functional groups in molecular compounds known as infrared spectroscopy. So through a process of a, um, a, a really a group work, you're going to tackle teaching one another major functional groups. That correlation between the properties of functional groups and molecular compounds and their intermolecular forces. And finally, the chapter wraps up by sharing with us a lab tool called infrared or IR spectroscopy in which we're able to identify functional groups that are present in a molecule. The two will begin looking at the backbone of all of organic compounds known as the hydrocarbon. The hydrocarbons are alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and the aromatic compounds. In the first section, we learn how to define a hydrocarbon. We look at the families that belong in that group called ane, ene, ine, and aromatics. We recognize the line bond formula for each of their molecular geometry. We become familiar with the term saturated and unsaturated and look at the calculate structure for the molecule known as benzene, the aromatic compound. This is an entire chapter later on in life in organic chemistry, but we introduce the molecule to you right now and it gets you thinking about the term aromatic. I'd like to introduce the term hydrocarbon, that backbone of chemical compounds in the organic family. Of course, they contain carbon and hydrogen, a hydrocarbon, the two essential elements. The first of these hydrocarbons, as I mentioned, is an A-N-E, an alkane. Hydrocarbons that do not have multiple bonds between carbon atoms. Another way of saying that is all single bonds in the molecule. The general formula for an is CN, H2N plus 2. Now let's make sense of that. Alkane, CN, H2N plus 2. Here's our first example. This molecule is called pentane, and look at why. When we look at pentane, I have one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms. The prefix represents my pent. P-E-N-T, pentagon, for instance, represents fine, five. And now notice the ending to represent all single bonds in that molecule, A-N-E. There are no double or triple bonds. Think about the number of hydrogens on this molecule. The terminal hydrogens have three, the terminal carbon have three hydrogens to complete their octet. The interior carbons each have two hydrogens to complete their octet. Count them with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. C5, the value of N, H12. That's twin plus two, two times five is ten. Two more, and the reason we're doing two more is because we're terminating the chain and need to saturate that compound's valence electrons by adding two more hydrogens. That's the plus two, is those carbons at the end. C5, H12. Now, notice this is a linear understatement. You no, know, there's nothing to molecules up, down, up, based on the sp3, hydrogen, zero, or nine, five degrees. There's nothing straight about it, but it is a straight chain. There's no branches, there's no cyclic structures, so we call that a straight chain. Now look at this pre cyclo. Notice how we've taken the terminal ends of a straight chain and we run connect with each other. This is a prefix hex, hexa, which means, and the prefix, uh, sorry, suffix, the ending is ane, means all the bonds. Now with me, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. It's the part of the word. It's in a cyclic structure. That's the cyclo part. And I see the prefix ane, meaning single bonds. How many hydrogens do you count now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. C five, eight, twelve. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. C five, H twelve in a cyclic structure. Let's write those formulas and names for the first ten alkanes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I just wanted to check that math. All right, methane is CH4, three carbon or hydrogens, methane. Ethane, CH double plus two is six. Six, that's ethane. C3H8, propane, 
three on all single bond behaviors to satisfy the octet. Butane, C4, 10. Four carbon, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens. Pain, C5, H, oh, pentane. Five hydrogen interior would have two hydrogens. Thinking about what you see, H3, one, two, three times, and a CH is another way to show that. Here's hexane, C6, 14. Heptane, C7, 14, 16. Octane, C8, H18. Nonane, C9, 8. Decane, C10, HA2, following the same trend of how you would draw the molecular structure. So, for instance, decane terminal CH3, you have carbons in the chain to another terminal CH3, a total of 10 carbons. These are all known as alkene, all bonds, so you see every single time the A and E ending. If we do have a multiple bond, we change the ending to let the reader know if it's double or triple. If it's a double bond, we have an E-N-E -E ending known as an alkene. Notice here we have one, two, three carbons. There's a prop to represent three. We could have propane like the previous page, but notice we have a different ending to know that the now, if I draw the picture the same way, actually the same molecule, we're just counting from the other direction. The carbon that starts the double bond gets the priority in the numbering system. Carbon one to two into the double bond. Carbon two to three is a single bond. So that it's one event. We just flip the molecule in space. Here we have cyclohexene. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's the hex for hexa, the six carbon. It's a ring picture, so there's the cyclo. And letting you know there's a double bond is E and E. The double bond that starts, if a carbon that starts the double bond, is the priority when you know cyclic structure. So the double bond exists between carbon one and two. And I don't care where I rotate that double bond to, let's say I place it here, it's still the same structure because it's still carbon one, two, three, and four. Cyclohexene. What would you think one butene? And two, butene might look like. Well, what prefix but stand for? That's for en, says it's a double bond, and carbon number one is going to be the origin of the double bond. One, two, three. Between carbon one and two, we contain the double bond, so we show it like this. And if you see two butene, one, two, remember telling us the order of the double bond, will be between carbon two and carbon three. That's a double bond. Right. Yeah, let's see. So we have a double bond making that particular molecule S T hybridized for the planar. So again, one domain, two domain, three domain, with your terminal we have three minus C two or C four on domain three hybridization. And so you've just moved the of the high bond. We'll show that with the numbering system to let you know the carbon that originates the double bond. And that's what we drew, one butene and two butene. Propene, CH3, CH, CH2, is an alkene. Write the structure of a constitutional isomer of propene that is not an alkene. It does not contain a double bond. So the CH3, CH, CH, let's find the other formula we have. One, two, three, three carbons. Three, four, five, six hydrogens. How else can we arrange those and still satisfy? And I'm going to think uh, molecular structure. One, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. I, draw, I satisfied that molecular formula. Remember, these are called constitutional isomers. It's propene. This is cyclopropane constitutional isomers. Let's introduce Y-N-E, alkyne. And of course, this is going to contain a triple bond. Now, all of a sudden, notice that one has S-E. That means it's near 30 degrees is its bond angle. So we have a very flat structure, carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, 5. So we go back to SP3, 3, 4, and 5. But it makes a very linear molecule. Here's ethyne. We have a triple bond between the two carbons. E takes the prix to carbons, ethyne. 
This structure has five carbon sets where you see pent, and I'm letting you know the location of that triple bond with the numbering system. The triple bond is between carbon one and two, so one pentine. If we move the, tri the uh, triple bond, we want to make sure that we give it the lowest possible name the structure. By numbering from right to left, come up with a two pentine name. What would be incorrect is to number from right, we would end up on carbon three pentine. And then if I numbered in the other direction, and the rule says, pick the direction that gives that triple bond the lowest number. That's the priority there. So always check the direction you should number when you're naming these compounds. Make sure you start from the side that gives the lowest number to the origin of the multiple bond. These are aromatic compounds we'll need to know. Aromatic. Well, they contain a special type of ring that most common example is a benzene ring. Notice how we have alternating doubles, single, double, single bonds in a cyclic structure. There are six carbon rings, one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens in a benzene ring. So our formula for benzene is A6. I can see that we can resonate and move double bonds to create a stable resonance structure. Where the double, single, double, single bond alternate in this fashion, double, single, double, single, double. And so these two structures give resonance, the alternating double single bond, which means that it's not really a single bond. It's not really a double bond. It's It exhibits resonance. Those pi are to be delocalized, if I can spell that, delocalized to the bending ring. Draw the circle inside to remind you that the pi bonds are delocalized. It's a representation of both of these structures, benzene. C6H6. Another type of aromatic compound puts a methyl group one of benzene. Now we name this as toluene. Memorize. If you see a functional group of carboxylic acid, I'm reading it cool. It has acidic proton on a carboxylic acid, C-O-O-H. Coo, carboxylic acid functional group. If it's attached to benzene, we name that acid as benzoic acid. Let me see these compounds as we move forward. The term saturated compound belongs to the family of alkanes. They only contain single bonds. A molecule is saturated if it's holding as many hydrogens as the carbon possibly can to fill the octet. All single bonds. The molecule is considered to be unsaturated if it has any pi bonds. So alkenes and alkynes with aromatic compounds contain pi bonds and therefore are unsaturated. They possess fewer than the maximum number of hydrogens. So when I go from like, bonds, A, N, E, we see that we're holding the maximum hydrogen possible. To make room for a double bond, we actually have to leave all the hydrogen up with an unsaturated compound here. Remember, C2H4 is the general formula. And it's E, and that's an unsaturated compound. And it was the ending now is on. We had to remove more hydrogens to make room for the triple bond. So we to a general formation to, we got to get rid of two H's to make the triple bond. It's all unsaturated. The terms that all the carbon are filled with H's. If you start removing a hydrogen to create spaces for multiple bonds, the molecule is now unsaturated. Let's do it again. If you're watching from home, try this with me. And if we're in class, you'll turn this in on a piece of paper. What are two constitutional isomers of cyclopentene that do not contain a ring? Cyclo, the carbons are going to be in a cyclic structure. Pent, that means there's five carbons. And ene means that there's a double bond. So we're going to draw a structure with five carbons. One, two, five, but in a circle. Because of the prefix cyclo tells me that it's a cyclic structure, not a straight chain, but the terminal ends have connected together to make a cyclic ring. The E and E tells me there's a double bond in that structure. doesn't matter where, because this will always tell me the origin of the bond. And if there's just one double bond in that structure, it's always going to be called carbon-1. So we can leave off the one, because we know that will be the priority carbon, cyclopentene. We have five. How many hydrogen are on there? I have one more here, one more here to complete the octet. Now I need two on the remaining carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. I count right. One, two, 
3456785678. How can we arrange five carbon and eight hydrogens to create another type of compound that's not a cyclic structure? Well, if it's not another you know, I'll draw line, one, two, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, just as an idea, fill the terminal N. I have two more hydrogens to place. We could fill one of those carbons, seven, eight. So now the hydrogens are gone, but I have these two carbons that do not yet have an octet, so that makes me suspect the multiple bond. To get each carbon to have an octet, four bonds is what it wants, we'll need a triple bond. We formed one, two, three, four, five. This is two. How about another constitution isomer? Well, that is by simply moving the location of the triple bond. We put it between carbon two and three. How about right at the start of the chain? So here's more hydrogen. This carbon has enough bonds already with four. This one needs two, this needs two, and that needs three to complete the four bonds carbon requires. So we've created a structure that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens, but we move the location to number one. So here we made one. Nine. Those are two isomers, cyclopentene that did not contain a ring. We just drew that. In benzene, we've talked about the aromatic structure of the alternating double single bond. Having read a number of the terms, use the double headed arrow structures. The catalase structure is one in which we draw a ring inside of that structure. That ring represents the delocalization of a pi bond in each of the double bonds. The bonds are of equal length, which is the very definition of a resonance structure. Benzene is incredibly stable simply due to the resonance of those alternating double full bonds. Remind ourselves that it would be sp2 hybridized. You have equal electron density above and below the ringed structure. Delocalization of pi bonds means it's that tweener length. So when I draw a benzene and represent it like this, it's not that I have a true double bond here, and it's not that I have a true single bond here. The resonance structure provides full length. So little data, the other bonds are equalized, spending an equal amount of time between all six carbons. Delocalized pi bonds. Cyclobutadiene. Cyclobutadiene. Cyclo means a structure that is in a cyclic circlet ring structure. Bute, four carbons. Buta, four carbons. Di means that there's two ene. Two double bonds, cyclobutadiene, one, two, four carbons in a cyclic structure. If it's like enzyme, it alternates. So we make double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond. So that's how it would be similar to benzene, alternating single double bonds. However, its bonds are not the same length. The double bond is actually shorter. We should have better representation. Double bond is shorter than the single bond. So it's not a square of equal length, but it's a where we have two separate bond lengths. Explain why it would be incorrect a resonance structure. If it's a resonance structure, they're not the same, it's rectangular. And as soon as it told me that, I understand that this module does not exhibit resonance. It is incorrect to show a resonance structure. Benzene has equal bond lengths. Cyclobutadiene does not. They are not the same in terms of resonance. So it's actually very unstable due to the ring strain. And we'll learn that there's an anti-aromatic rule known as Huckel's rule at a later date. It might even be in, uh, I think it is in the second half of the chapter. So it might be in, in, in I'm sorry, the second chapter of the book. So it might be in orgo number two. So just remember, pi electrons that are localized and therefore it's not considered aromatic. Decalized. Exhibit the term aromatic exhibits resonance. Let's pause the video here and we'll pick up with the next lesson called polar covalent bonds.